Welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. This is a question and answer presentation with Aloisa, titled Gender Dynamics in Families. This is a discussion about gender dynamics in families and how parents use children as emotional substitutes when they have not grieved the emotional pain from their own childhood. Recorded on the 21st of July 2021 at 1.30pm in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello and welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. I'm Aloisa. This presentation is a question and answer session. Thank you for sending in your questions. Um, these are the questions that have been asked. One, my eldest boy, middle child, when he was three, initiated playing a game with me, a hundred kisses at bedtime. I usually counted by tens and we both enjoyed the game, but my husband was full of rage. So it is likely that I needed the kisses and he reflected my need, or was it him who wanted the kisses at bedtime? Does the child always reflect the parent's need or does he have his own desires? And how can you tell the difference? Good question. So there's another question as well, um, but we'll focus on this one and then we'll look at the second question in a minute because it's a bit different. We'll answer these questions using principles and self-reflection questions so that you can apply, so anyone who's listening to them can apply them to their own situation. The question is, does the child always reflect the parent's need or does um, he have his own desires and how can you tell the difference? When a child is three or small, they're reflecting their environment. They haven't yet developed their own desires yet. They may be experimenting with them and feeling, but really they're reflecting the parents. So they're reflecting you and your partner. And this is a principle for everybody. You know, children are reflectors. They are reflecting you. So regardless of what's happening in your family, when, they're, when children are small, they're just reflecting the parents or the adults and the environment that they're in. Desire is something that develops and you need to develop a desire and thing. It doesn't mean that they might not have wants or sometimes desires to do different things, but they're not conscious yet of what their desires are. And the difference is, is that in the example that you use, and you could use many different examples here, this is, um, to me, highlighting some gender issues in, your, in the family. I don't have, I don't know you, and there's not enough information, like I haven't got enough specifics to and be fully specific so we're going to talk in generalities and uh, how you can start to investigate for yourself an answer to this question. One is I would look at gender dynamics. This is about a mum and a son. Often women and are substituting um, with their sons a lot of feelings and emotions that they want from their sons that they didn't or perceive they didn't get from their fathers and because as um, the mother, we haven't dealt with a lot of the injuries or issues that we have with our, with our dad or with men, significant male figures in our life when we were children. Then we substitute that with, um, with, the sons, with our sons or male children in the family. This often happens between dads and daughters as well. They don't deal with their issues with mum and so they substitute their daughter to fill either in emotional gaps or fill in areas that they have not actually worked through themselves when, you know, then as adults, we're not self-responsible. We either want feelings from our children or we want to feel, you know, avoid certain feelings um, that the children might reflect to us. And so this is something for both, both parents to look at. You know, often that happens with mothers, sons and sons and fathers. But also you can do with the same sex child. So, you know, mothers and their daughters can, mums, if they haven't dealt with a, their relationship with their mum, like say, as the mother, I haven't dealt with my relationship with my mum and I haven't emotionally worked through those issues, then I'll substitute certain things with um, my daughter in order that, or I'll have expectations or demands on my daughter because I haven't dealt with the emotions from my past. That can happen with fathers and sons as well. So the father and the son, the father hasn't dealt with the issues with his dad, so then he's going to act out all of his unhealed emotions with his son. And he might want him to be his buddy, or he may, you know, treat him as though he's superior to him, or he may teach him to be arrogant, or he may want him to follow in his footsteps. There's so many different things. And all those things I've said about 
both genders can you can apply whether you're male or female. It's not they're not situation specific. It's just as a parent, the relationship that you have with a child often you are substituting. It's even one more step than that. If you haven't dealt with the issues in your childhood and then you have meet a partner and you're with your partner and you don't deal with the issues in your relationship, anything that you're not getting fulfilled with your partner, you're most likely going to substitute with your child. And this is very damaging to the child and it's also not self-responsible on your part. It's not loving for any parent to do this because we are basically making the child, giving them a role, giving them a responsibility and having demands and expectations on our children that they fulfill our emotional needs rather than us actually working through our issues and letting the children develop as they would like to with their own desires and their own feelings and express in their own expression of their love and their affection for us. We're forcing often the children via our unhealed emotional injuries to give us certain emotional feelings, to make us, you know, to fill in gaps and give us feelings that we, we're wanting and demanding or to, you know, we're doing things with them in order that we can avoid certain feelings in ourselves. So we either want to get feelings or we want to avoid feelings mainly. You know, there's other things that happen, but mainly I, we, I, in my experience, I either want something from the children or I want to avoid something from the children. So it all comes back to how humble am I? How humble to feeling my emotions am I? Now, the fact that your partner also was really um, angry about what was happening indicates that there's a problem in your relationship. And in this case, your son's reflecting you and the attraction is perfect for both of the parents to deal with certain emotions and to see reflected um, certain issues that are in the relationship. Um, so let's make this a more of a general comment. So in a partnership, if you're angry, then you have an issue. There's something in you being exposed that either you want to control the situation, you don't want to feel certain things, or you want to... Anger is usually used as a way, a form of like control or to feel more powerful or to get someone to do something that you want. Underneath anger is often a whole lot of other feelings and emotions. And if we can be humble to the fact, so let yourself feel your anger, for instance, about whatever's happening so in this case, something's happening between um, your partner and a child and you feel angry about it. Now, in this case, it's about a game that they're playing at bedtime, but it could be anything. It could be about, you know, a dynamic uh, that a dad has with his daughter and, he lo and he's more affectionate with the daughter than he is with you as your wife. And you as the wife feel really angry and upset that his attention and his affections are going to the daughter and not to you. Now, your anger is indicating there's an issue. Go feel your rage, figure out what you're so angry about, what is the actual issue. If you can get through your rage, and that might only last for a few minutes or, or less, depending on how humble you are and depending on what, how much resistance you've got. But once you get through that, there'll be other feelings of sadness and grief and possibly, you know, jealousy, which is, you know, based on, which is a hate-based emotion. There might be all kinds of other things like, and underneath it, all of that, you may end up finding, well, I just feel really unloved by men. And when my daughter's, you know, getting all the affection, I feel like I want to, you know, that's what I want. Or all your feelings about what relationships should be are going to come up and be exposed. It might also be that you are a dad and your wife spends all their time with the children, doesn't matter, girls and boys. And all her attention is focused on the children and you get, you get nothing or you feel you get nothing and you feel really angry and you start trying to force her to give you more attention or you expect her to do certain things or you're angry that she's more loves the children, you feel basically more loved, the children are more loved than you are and that all the attention's on the children and you don't have a relationship anymore. Now, feel your anger if you feel angry about it feel any jealousy or any competition you have with the children, don't take that out on your children. It's not their fault. Your children are just reflecting things that you and your partner need to sort out, that you and your partner already had issues with before you even met because you didn't deal with whatever happened in your childhood and the relationship that you had with your mum and your dad at that time. If you can see that what's playing out between your, your partner and you and what's playing out with the children and you is just an, an attraction or a trigger or a an event to expose emotions in you personally 
for you to learn more about love and truth and, and God's laws and to heal all the, un, you know, the emotional injuries that you've inherited or that you've chosen and created as you've grown up and see it not as the fault of the other person, but rather as, okay, here's an opportunity for me to work through something. Here's an opportunity for us to learn more about love. Here's an opportunity for me to learn more about myself. Here's an opportunity for me to work through certain feelings and emotions and beliefs and ideas I have about relationships or ideas I have about being a parent that might be out of harmony with love. Some of them might be in harmony with love. Some of them might not be. Who knows? There's lots of different situations here. Anger is a guide to find out what's underneath and deeper things. So in these examples that we've said, anger is indicating that, okay, something's, uh, you know, it's bringing my attention to something. What is this about? By feeling your, the emotions you have, so going through the anger and then getting to the underlying feelings, I suggest you'd probably find some grief underneath all of that about how you feel in the partnership or how unloved you feel by probably your parents and, and probably by your partner and all different types of things. That's in the examples I've used. You can use the same method and the same principles to find out any other situation that may happen. So look at yourself first is one principle. Feel how you feel. Be humble. Have the humility to actually express and feel your emotions in a self-responsible manner, not taking them out on your family or your partner, just feeling them and finding out what the real reason is that you're feeling really upset about what's happening. And then start looking at, well, hold on, what's our relationship really like? And what was my relationship with my mum and dad like? And where am I feel out of harmony with love personally? And where am I in harmony with love? And then speak about it with your spouse and work it out. Children are always reflecting their parents and they do so uh, even when we're adults, we're still reflecting emotional injuries that were created by our parents until we work through and release the cause within ourselves and actually come to release them. So even as an adult, we're still acting out childhood issues. So in answer to the question, yes, the child is always reflecting the parents. A child also develops their own desires. And this is something that, that is if they're allowed to. So if a situation like this is happening in your family where one or both parents are substituting children rather than dealing with the issues between the partners, the partner or dealing with their own emotions and they're using children to fill in gaps and children are reflecting this, then you have an opportunity to look at why that is happening and find the cause of what is going on and where and where you're not close and connected with your partner. It's also an opportunity to look at what you want from various, like different genders and different ch children. And I've noticed women often use their sons in a manner to, they almost like, it's a very unloving thing we do actually, is we don't deal with the issues that from our childhood with our, with our, with our dads. We then basically via our not dealing with them we want to have a man in our life who loves us but we often don't want like the sexual interaction so we often use our sons in a way to we we give them feelings that they are superior and they're the best man and they're wonderful and they can do no wrong and as long as they give mummy certain emotions then mummy's going to love them and do whatever that mummy wants for them and basically we're teaching boy children in this example that they are superior to, to women, they can have whatever they want, that they can do no wrong, that, you know, we, we teach them arrogance, superiority, entitlement. We're telling them they're the ideal man and that they're better than our, hus you know, than our husband or our partner. Very damaging to our relationship with our significant other. Um, very damaging to the son as well. Very damaging to the child. And we're teaching the children to treat women badly because they're going to expect all women to treat them like their mum did. And also they may end up treating us really badly as well. And this is something that um, I can see as a theme in our, in our world is that women are sort of up doing this with, with boys and they're growing up to treat women really badly. And then women are going, well, men are the problem. And we're not seeing that as mothers, we are a problem because we are <laughs> actually training boys to feel superior and better and everything. It also sets up a dynamic with dads and sons where dads feel jealous and competitive and 
they start competing with their sons. Now they may do that anyway because they were taught to compete with their dads as well, so they have a tendency and a, a, an opening to do that to do that anyway because they have also may have been competitive with their dad, but then they're also having to compete for their wife's affection as well because the wife is substituting the, the son instead of dealing with the issues that she has with her husband or her partner. All of these situations are quite damaging to the child and create a lot of false beliefs and actually then lead on to greater repercussions in society. It is a something that is worth looking at and looking at what it is that we feel or perceive we didn't get from our dads. What are the emotions that we're avoiding with men? What are our beliefs about men? How do we truly feel about men and how we're treated by men? How do we truly feel about ourselves as a woman? How we feel about the way we've been treated as women? These are, you know, what, are, what we feel it's okay to accept, what we feel is not okay to accept. All of these things we need to look at and feel about. The same goes for um, a man in the relationship is if you're substituting your with your daughter and you're getting a lot of feelings from her and you want certain feelings from her and you know sometimes there might even be sexual interactions and that goes for a mum or a dad you may want certain feelings you know you create basically a soulmate relationship with your child rather than your partner or seeking to have find your soulmate and many parents do this and it's very damaging to the child and to your own soul to do so and it's to look at regardless of you know so we were just looking at if if a man's doing this with their daughter and the same could go for a mother and son then you know the mother's going to feel very unloved by her her partner and it may feel jealous of her daughter and may treat then start to hate her daughter and feel really competitive with her daughter and then the daughter's going to grow up and feel like she's daddy's special girl and all of these things and it makes for a very murky unloving situation and creates a lot of gender dynamics that have an on-flow effect into, you know, relationships that the children then get into. And it's all, all really because parents didn't want to deal with the emotions that they inherited from childhood or were exposed to and then the choices they've made along the way. And a adult grown-up relationship, you deal with the issues with your partner and you wouldn't substitute with a child. And sometimes that can feel quite confronting to face that and to actually be really honest about what you want from your children. And often it's not very loving, it's not very nice, and it can seem quite, I call it icky. And it is. It's very selfish and self-involved on the parent's part, and it causes a lot of pain and suffering for the child in the future as well when they need to go through that. There are just some possibilities as we're talking sort of about gender and different dynamics playing out. I feel that a partnership, you need to spend time on your relationship and not fill in the gaps with your children. And if you find that you are filling in the gaps and you recognize that and you go, hold on, I'm using my child now, you know, to get affection because I'm not getting it from my partner or to, to make me feel good because I feel like not very good with my partner or whatever it is. Those are all things that you need to feel about firstly. So you go back to your basic principles. Ha look at myself first. How do I feel? What are my emotions? What's causing those emotions? What happened to me as a child? What's going on? Am I being truthful and transparent with my partner and speaking up and, you know, trying to sort out this issue? Am I being ethical with my partner? Mm, probably not. Am I being like moral in this, in this example? No, not if I'm substituting you know, my partner relationship with a child that's not ethical and it's not loving. Am I in harmony with God's laws? Well, if I'm substituting emotions and I'm not feeling my emotions and I'm not releasing and working through the emotional injuries that I have and making soul-based change, no, I'm not in harmony with God's laws either. And there'd be many different laws that you wouldn't be in harmony with. Ask God via the conscience, like, okay, God, how do you feel about the actions that I'm taking? What is the truth about these? And you can get answers and feelings about that. You know, how am I being unloving to my child here? How am I being unloving to my partner? What is your intention for a partner relationship? What is your intention for a child relationship? All of these are self-reflection questions that you can look at and explore and, and discover. It's going to create a lot of pain and suffering in both your intimate relationship and your relationship with your children if you substitute emotions with them and you don't deal with your past pain and heal the relationship with your partner and heal the emotions that 
the unhealed emotional injuries you've inherited from your childhood. Those are going to play out with your partner. It's going to cause a lot of pain and suffering in your relationship. And it's also going to cause a lot of pain and suffering um, with the children as well. And it sets up unhealthy dynamics, um, meaning unhealthy, meaning out of harmony with love and truth. The second part of the question was about developing a child's own desires and how do you recognise the difference? Well, sadly, a lot of the time, children's desires are actually really shut down. And depending on the emotional injuries of the parent themselves, is going to depend how heavily a child's desires uh, are shut down. Often, as parents, we're shut down to our own desires. We weren't allowed to explore our own passions, desires, you know, feelings, thoughts, actually experiment and trial out a lot of things. And so then we're going to naturally suppress others from doing so if, if we feel challenged when other people do that. Sometimes we have a feeling of, we have certain feelings where we just suppress we suppress others because we want control or domination or power over them as well. And so then that child's going to find it very hard if you're a dominating person who wants control and power over the child, they're going to find it very hard to express their own desires. They might express your desires or what you agree with. Um, if you are really shut down to certain areas in your life and that's actually their sole passions and desires, they're going to find it very hard to explore those because you're going to be totally against it and trying to get them to do what you want. So there's a lot of uh, impediments that uh, you face as a child in order to express your own desires. Sadly, we don't let the natural curiosity of a child out and for a child to experiment and explore and have a go at different things and make their own mistakes. We often are preventing them from investigating and just exploring all kinds of things in the world because of our, again, really our own emotional beliefs or demands or feelings that we, judgments we have about what a child might be interested in, all kinds of different reasons cause us to, to make these decisions. And again, though, it's go back to the basics, which is your soul and what your feelings in your soul are is what your child's going to be responding to. Yes, technically, as a child grows, you know, grows older and they're starting to explore their own desires and if they're left to their own devices, they're going to explore and experiment, investigate and try a lot of different things. And the more experiences a child can have, and this goes if you've been shut down as an adult yourself, the more you can explore and express your own desires and investigate and experiment and find like what you, things that you like or you don't like and examine those closely because sometimes you may find things that you really like but there's a lot of addiction involved in it, like you get a lot of feelings for it or it makes you feel good or you know, it doesn't challenge you in any way or you're already naturally disposed and are quite competent at those things, but you never do anything that challenges you. And anytime you do something that you find hard or awkward or whatever, you never do it. But ironically, the things sometimes that you find hard, awkward, you're most afraid about that make you most angry, figure those things out and emotionally work through the reasons about why because that way you can really find out whether you don't like doing them or whether it's just that there's some impediment in your soul because of an injury-based emotion that's preventing you from exploring that thing further. So when you first start the discovery process, and this is for adults I'm speaking about, let yourself work through the emotions. So try or something, work through the emotions. Don't like just do it once and go, oh, I hate that, I'm never doing it. So let's take ballroom dancing, for example. You might go ballroom dancing, and go, oh, I hate, hate it, because you're used to being really good at something competent and whatever, and this time you don't know the steps, you don't know what to do, you're just not good at it. So you're like, no, I don't even want to try. Now, you may pursue that a little bit emotionally, go home, feel your sadness or feel your anger, feel your shame, feel whatever feeling it is that you should get it immediately, that you're no good, that you look silly, that you don't glide, that you're not you know, pretty on the dance floor, whatever it might be. Feel whatever you feel. Allow that process. Turn up again, do it again, do it again. There might be shame because your dad thought it was silly to do dancing or your mum thinks that boys should be, you know, strong and they shouldn't do dancing because that's a feminine pursuit. What, you know, there might be so many different beliefs in that. But explore that emotionally and work through those emotions. And then you may find, you know, once you've gone through all the emotions, oh, no, actually, I'm not that interested in dancing, but you won't have that same aversion to it and you might like it under certain circumstances, or you may find you have a super passion for ballroom dancing. Now apply that same principles to any situation or anything that you do, and you'll be able to come to understand, one, why you do the things you already do now, and what's truly motivating and your intentions and 
causing you to want to do those things and also look at why you don't want to do other things. What emotional impediment is stopping you from exploring or having a go at different things? My suggestion is is to give it a go and to trial things to investigate and the same goes for children. Uh, the most wider range of experiences that they can possibly have and to feel. When they come up against something that's hard or challenging, let themselves go through the feeling process to work through why they feel it's hard and challenging and get through that so that they deal with the emotions and move on. So desire is something that, just like for us as adults, if we've been shut down and suppressed, sometimes we don't even know what our desires are. We don't even know what we feel or, or how we feel about things. As children, we're just responding, responding. And I, I noticed as an adult, I was just kept responding. I just kept responding to my environment. I kept responding to the injuries that I inherited, to what my mum and dad approved of, to and didn't even explore outside of those things, ever, never. Not until I heard Divine Truth and then started going through this emotional process. And there was a period of time where I was very sad and upset and I realised, had some really big realisations of like, wow, I just thought I'd be a wife and a mother. That was my only purpose in life, that that, that was it. And there was a lot of grief in me about that because I'm a whole soul with all these passions and desires and I didn't even know what they were. And there's a lot of sadness of having shut those down. Now I'm saying that I have done certain things in my life that actually are more in line with my passions and desires, but they just weren't purified yet in the sense of they weren't necessarily in harmony with love or truth and some of the reasons that I was doing them aren't very loving. or And so... I'm going through a process of refining those things and coming to see, well, what, what is it that I loved about those things and what were the addictive things that I was doing or the areas that I was trying to fill in gaps or get feelings or avoid feelings. This is just a process that you can apply to any area of your life or pursuit that you're having and come to know what your passions and desires are and also what the desires of a child are. Again, if you have blocks or suppression or you have beliefs about certain things, then that's going to be reflected as well by your child. So even though a child may initiate something with you, it is still, remember, it's a reflection for you and it's something for you to feel through and it's not about the child. So remember, it's always about looking at you first and whatever's happening with the child because if you change the feelings inside of you, then maybe, you know, your child won't want to play the same game or won't initiate the same behaviour. And I know that's actually for a fact. Whatever in your soul is being reflected out, the child is reflecting the unhealed emotional injuries of both parents and the environment. And so this is something for you to look at and to work through. So yes, a child always reflects the parents. And then as a child grows older, they can begin to develop their own desires. Yeah, sadly, some people, some children are so suppressed that they don't that develop their own desires and they feel very like they can't. I know that our children have some issues with that. They weren't encouraged with their own desires and now they find it very hard to know what they want to do and then take action and follow through and create things and to actually express themselves and what they truly desire and love to do. Yeah, these are things to look at and to apply to your own family and your own situations. The second question in this email was, my oldest daughter is 26 and still angry with me. So I'm trying to understand how to dissect the problem. A, law of attraction, everyone is angry with me and I need to do anger, fear, grief about everyone being angry with me. B, reflection, her anger is actually my anger that I have at my parents and I need to focus on releasing my anger at them. C, she is angry about the demands that I had on her growing up. D, she is angry that I did not prevent abuse incidents from happening to her and I was unaware of. Yes, I take full responsibility for them. Where do you recommend that I start with this? Yeah, sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming where to start, doesn't it? I think all of the above you need to, would, would, would need to be felt. Again, I don't have, it's a general question um, and I'm going to take it as general and look at it as about what do you do when a child is angry and you have a whole lot of feelings about it? So anger. Remember, anger is a guide. It's showing that there's a whole lot of other emotions and you know, a child may be expressing their anger for many different reasons. Might be feeling that 
that's the only emotion they are allowed to express. It might be a way to feel powerful over other emotions that they have. Anger can also be that they're not getting their addictions met. In this case, possibly, but if she's angry at you specifically, she probably has specific reasons. If you're on talking terms with, with your child, I'd, I'd ask them. I ask our kids all the time, like, what are you feeling angry about? What, what do you feel sad about? What are you, you know, what are you feeling about? Sometimes when they're in the middle of feeling it, I just let them feel. And afterwards, I'll ask them, I'll say, what, what made you really upset about that situation? And in my case, you know, um, our daughter has said to me, well, mum, you know, it's so unfair. Like, you treat the boys differently to me. You treat them unequally, and that's unfair. And I think that, you know, you love them more than you love me, and that, that feels terrible to me. And she's been able to eloquently sort of tell me certain things about what's going on. And then I can look at that and go, well, yeah, I can see why you'd feel quite upset about that. And I can also then help to direct her in the direction of like, well, is it that you're really angry about that is like, yes. Or is it that you're really, really sad and that it feels like, you know, how does that feel? And then we can have some discussions about how unloved she feels and she can connect to some of her emotions about that. A child might not want to talk to you as an adult and again as an adult child they have their own free will they can making their own choices and decisions based on what happened to them when they were little i would approach this sub this i would approach any anything again going back to base principles look at yourself first okay you know how do i feel about about the fact that my daughter's angry at me all the time do I understand like what, what I've really, you know, ha have I done? I would look at what you want. What do you want from your daughter? What do you want from your children? What is the compensation in this for things that I have done? Now, in this, this particular example, there's a whole lot of things like having demands upon someone. Yeah, someone and eventually is going to feel pretty angry if you're demanding upon them all the time, whether that's your partner or children. They're going to feel some feelings about that. If someone's been abused, yeah, there's going to be a lot of anger about, that's going to need to come out and be expressed about being abused and about the situation. Um, there's a whole lot of things. In fact, uh, at some point I need, I'll do a, a presentation on abuse and applying principles of divine truth to abuse because I think it's a worthwhile topic and something that's uh, close to uh, my own family personally. Also, Yes, your, your daughter probably is reflecting you to, to a certain extent. All of, all of the things that you have noted down could be possibilities. And if a child is very small, then yeah, if they're like angry all the time, then that would be definitely reflecting you and your partner. If certain things have happened to them, they're going, a, a rage might be a, an acceptable emotion in the family and they may express that in order to indicate that something's wrong. So in our family, for example, a daughter very, very angry, expressing anger, letting her be angry about how she feels about it, how unfair she feels things are, has been a really important process in order to, for her to soften and come to acknowledge and feel some of her grief. And that's part of the process of working through emotion. So as far as where to start, look at yourself first. How do you feel in regards to what's happening in your life? How do you feel to the response that your child is having? What are your feelings about anger? What are your feelings about the emotion? And it might not be anger, you know, let's make this more generalized. It could be any emotion that's happening. What are your feelings about emotion itself? What are your feelings about specific emotions and when that's happening? How do you feel? What do you want to do to shut it down and stop it? Or to not feel your own emotion? Or how does that make you feel? So feel all of those. As adults, we need to look at more about our our parents and our relationships with them. So uh, in this instance, it's a girl child and she's angry and, and the mother is feeling upset about that and has some feelings about that. So I'd go back to my relationship with my mum as well. Now, when I say that, it's easy to get kind of intellectual and go, oh, this is about my mum and whatever. So I suggest to start where you're at. Feel the feelings of what it feels like to be on the receiving end of your daughter's anger. We're keeping in mind that your daughter, you've created a whole lot of stuff in your daughter. And so there is some compensation of her anger and you, she's, her anger needs to be felt. And you, if you love her, you're going to let her just feel her anger. What you can do about that is feel like, well, okay, how do I feel when a woman's angry at me? Not like my child's angry at me like that, but 
How do I feel when a woman's angry at me? What does that make me feel? What are my beliefs about anger? Uh, do I feel like it's okay to express my anger? Do I, am I suppressing my anger? And then as a child, what was she like? I'd look, look down at the children as well and reflect back on certain, on the events and how your children expressed or didn't express themselves when they were children. If you have a relationship with your daughter, talk to your daughter. Again, you could apply this to your son, to sons as well. This example is just about a, um, a, a girl child. So talk to her, ask her what's wrong. Why is she so upset? What's she angry about? And if you have a feeling of wanting to love her and really truthfully wanting to understand, but look at your motivation. Do you just want your daughter to stop being angry at you? Or do you want, or are you quite happy? Um, or are you trying to learn more about her and about love and about her experience? so that you can also understand what happened from her perspective. Because they're two different things. If you just want to shut down your daughter's emotion, I don't suggest necessarily talking to her. I feel like deal with your own emotion about emotion and your own feelings and beliefs around emotion first so that you're not going to try and shut her down. Or you might believe that, oh no, I really want to love and want to do it. So engage. And then if you find where, that you're actually unloving in the engagement, then you can say, oh look, I need to feel some things or go and feel it afterwards and then you can re-engage from a more loving place. Once you sort of looked at yourself and, and then you need to and felt how you, you feel about it and you do need to feel how you feel, your children are reflecting certain things for you but they're also there to help you to learn about love. So you can start to pray and to ask God via the conscience about what is it that God's trying to show you through this interaction? What is it that you need to heal within yourself that's out of harmony with love? Start with where you're at. So the things that are causing you to feel something, feel those, whether that's your addictions being confronted or whether there's a genuine emotion coming up, start where you're at. It's always the best place to start because then it can help you to go somewhere else and you can either figure out, I've got an addiction here and I don't want my daughter to be angry. I've got an addiction because I think that now I'm starting to work on myself and I'm starting to see things so she should you know, give me a bit of slack for that or make me feel better or... Whatever your beliefs and feelings are, I don't know your situation specifically. We want this to apply to all people. So look at where you're at and your feelings about how you feel about what's happening in your life and whatever's going on with your children. Now, if you feel hard done by with the way your children are treating you or you feel like you're the one who's being hurt by them, you're really out of harmony with love now because you're the one who's damaged your children. And they are going to go through a process of feeling very upset at you for a while. And that is part of the compensation for your unloving actions that you took towards them. Now, there's, depending on the treatment of the child, depending whether you've created them to be more entitled or to feel superior or that they're better than you or whatever you've done or whether you've dominated and controlled them, they're going to act in different ways and there's going to be different reasons for the reactions that they have and what they're reflecting back to you. But even as adult children, they're still reflecting to you just like young children. The thing is, is that often as adults now, it's more complex. We started making our own decisions. We've got our own choices. We've got our own loving, unloving desires and loving desires at times. And we've got our own heap of resistance and beliefs and feelings and everything that we've created on top of all of our childhood trauma and damage. And when I say well, in this case, yes, it is trauma as well. So we've built layers and layers and layers on top of that. So sometimes it's not as transparent as when children are so little, because that's what I love about little children is they're so transparent and so open and you can see things so, so wonderfully and having some discussions with our kids at the moment, because I love how transparent they are. And they're starting to, I suppose, experiment with facades you know, an experiment with embellishment or lying or toning things down or not saying things or creating a facade in different situations. We often talk about that. You know, I, I talk to them about that. And it's really interesting because as I say to them, I say, I love it when you're transparent. And they're still transparent enough that I can see through their facades. And because I know them, I can see through their facades. Yeah, it's sad that they feel that they want to create a facade in order to be more accepted in the world. Or, and those are just, again, beliefs rather than feeling different emotions. So the question is basically where to start when, when there's certain things happening with, with adult children towards yourself. And that is look at yourself first, feel how you feel and express that. And again, you just need to fully feel what you feel. And 
with a focus not on changing the child, not on making the child wrong or seeing your point of view or any of those things, but at looking at it from your perspective, wow, how do I, what's being reflected to me here? How do I feel about that? How does this relate to my experience from when I was a child? And there's things that will be exposed and will come up as you go through the emotional process in order that you will come to feel different things probably that happened to you as a child. And again, feel those in a childlike way as like you did when you were a little child. You'll need to, if, you, if they happen to you when you're a three-year-old, a three-year-old, you're going to feel them like a three-year-old. That's why sometimes it seems illogical the way we respond to things at times because we're really reacting to certain feelings that we had and we didn't release or feel when we were little children. So we often act like little children in our emotions or act out of our emotions like little children when we're growing up. That's not an excuse. You are an adult, so you can deal with that. But you do need to feel like a little child would feel and like you would have felt when you were a small child. As you're feeling, then you can start exploring what the causes are. Again, you can ask God by the conscience. And, and sometimes I ask God about, well, what's the lesson of love you're trying to teach me here? What, am, what are you trying to show me? What am I trying to do? And, I, and I, uh, I just say, please make it as obvious as possible and so blatant that I cannot miss it. <laughs> and when I have a f- real feeling of that, and that's what a true prayer is, it's just a, fe- a sincere desire or feeling, answers come very, very rapidly. And just trust those and feel about whatever happens as the law of attraction and the law of cause and effect shows you and the law of compensation shows and highlights you those. Just be humble to whatever comes into your sphere of existence and open to possibilities and let yourself feel about those. Once you can feel the cause, then you can actually come to know and understand what you did, why you did it, how it's affected both your child and also yourself and how that is can and how you can correct what has happened and to the extent that you can and again that's going to be an emotional feeling process to do that you'll also be able to feel the difference between what's just compensation you know of of what you've done wrong and when you start having a true desire to feel different um, to feel through why you did what you did then you can start Um, it will happen more rapidly when your desire is more in harmony with wanting to know and understand what's going on. Remember the four key qualities, love, truth, humility and faith, and those will stand you in good stead. Do you want to love? If you want to love, you're going to just see what's happening with your your adult children or or young children as an attraction for you and something that you can learn more about love. If your desire is to love, then you, you're going to want to know about your child's experience. You're going to want to know and understand how they feel about something. That's what relationships are when you want to love with your partner. And whether it's a partner or a child or a friend or God, you're going to need to have a feeling of like, or just an acquaintance or someone new who you meet, of I want to get to know them, being curious and inquisitive and wanting to have a feeling of loving them and If we really love, then we'll have a desire to grow and for the other person to grow and to find out the truth about that person and to know and feel about what their experiences were or to understand them and and why they are like they are or why they take the actions that they do. And to really know someone, you you, you need to feel them. If you can't feel a person, how can you know them? You can't. If you have expectations and demands on someone, You can't know them because you're just wanting something from them that's not loving them anymore. Love is a key thing. And if you have a desire and aspiration to love, you will work through any injury or any belief or feeling that's out of harmony with love. If you work through all of those things, then your resistance to feeling will be gone. And also your resistance to, you know, anything that you create in the children will be gone. And when they do come to feel at whatever period or time in their life that happens, There'll be no resistance from you as a parent if you have cleared all of your injuries and all of the feelings that you had. As an adult child, as I said, you know, depending on their acquaintances, their associations, uh, what their choices are in their life, what environment they've now set up, whether they have children and all of these kind of things will depend on then the choices that they make. And it doesn't mean that if you work through all of your issues and all of your feelings and unloving lovingness and you come to a place where you purely love your child for for them and because you desire to love them 
that they're going to love you back. They may not. And that is something that happens. It doesn't automatically happen that way. But by you working through it and doing it, you've just given a gift now to, to them, which you didn't do when they were little, if you had children or adults, but you can give that to them now. And that will help them in the sense that they won't have any resistance from you anymore contributing to their life. I do trust in God's laws that if that happens, then a lot of good things can happen for a child in their life as well, based on their own decisions. And you don't know how it will end up. You don't. It may end up surprising you what might happen. But don't expect. Any expectation is not in harmony with love, and any demand is not in harmony with love. So any expectations and your demands you have, then work through that. Yeah, love, love and wanting to love and having a desire to love others is a, is a really lovely desire to have, and it's a lovely feeling as well. It also makes, I don't know, makes life more enjoyable and it starts being interested in people in a different way of not what you can get out of them, but just being curious and inquisitive about who they are and what they're like and, and ha wanting to also give the gift of love to somebody. And that is a, a beautiful gift and a really lovely experience to have. So looking at yourself first, you're feeling how you feel, you're finding the causes, you're focusing on love and, and truth is with love, like finding the truth and, and also being loving. Emotion, which is really feeling how you feel, but it's so important to feel your emotions. No real change happens unless there's emotional soul-based change. The only real change is soul-based emotional change. So you need to feel the emotions that you have. We'll look at what your, emo your relationship to emotion itself is. Look at the experience and expression of emotion that you have and come to enjoy feeling your emotions and actually love feeling and expressing emotion. It's an important progression to make in your development. Also, anger can guide us to deeper pains. And often when people are angry, we often have a kickback reaction towards them where we want to stop them being angry because we're really not being humble to our own feelings. If you can just be humble to your own feelings. I'm finding now like when people were angry, I'm like, okay, well, what's the real issue here? Like anger is just a way to either try and shut me down from saying something because they don't want me to speak up or it could be a way that they're just trying to get some power and control back in their life. But I don't now just succumb to that. I'm like, okay, well, what's going on? Why are you angry? What's happening? Why do you want to remain? And if someone's remaining angry for a long period of time and I love them, I'm like, well, you know, why do you want to remain angry? What do you get out of that? Like, what are you really upset about? What are you trying to avoid by that, by remaining angry? Or what is this anger trying to help you see? You know, are you responding to something that is really out of harmony with love? Or are you just not getting your addictions met? What, are you just really angry about the way that the world is? Or be specific. And with anger, be really, really specific. Not everyone, not everyone is angry. You're just angry about everything. There's always a specific reason and a specific thing that we get angry about. And it's very important to be as specific as possible and get to the actual thing that we are. By being specific, it brings up emotion. By being vague in general, we avoid feeling a whole lot of emotion. And that's why I think a lot of people want to be general and vague and not say certain things and not be specific about things because then they can avoid feeling their emotions. Without feeling emotion, you're not going to get anywhere. And without feeling emotion, if you don't feel your emotions, you're not in harmony with God's laws anymore. So now there's going to be more pain and suffering in your life and you're out of harmony with God's laws. So things aren't going to go smooth and it's going to be rough and it's not going to be so good. So God's laws, being in harmony with God's laws, which means being in harmony with love, being truthful, finding causes, feeling emotion. This is really important and it's something that will help you to work through any issue in your life. And just a reminder, you've got the conscience and there's prayer that you can use. So prayer is a heartfelt longing or desire. You can pray to God to help you to come to understand and know what's happening in your relationship with your child and your adult children. The conscience can also give you immediate truth-based answers exactly what's happening, but it requires humility and also to be emotionally open in order to hear the, emotion, the answer. Well, actually, the conscience, you can get a direct yes or no answer. You can actually get a direct answer as long as you really truly desire to hear the answer because you can also decide that you don't want to hear it and then make up your own answer. 
God will answer any sincere desire and any sincere prayer and longing. The relationships between parents and children is often woven with, like interwoven with so much unlovingness and it's, I feel it's a parent's responsibility to untangle that and to come to actually love and to honour truth and uphold that and to correct anything out of harmony with love that we have created. And this is a, a lovely thing of asking questions and seeking for truth and applying the principles of divine truth to your, your life is that you can come to understand why you did what you did and what caused you to do that and what from your childhood you were avoiding and didn't heal and what was being reflected or is being reflected back to you by children and how then you not dealing with your issues, which means not being loving and not being truthful, how that then affects the environment that you live in and what's reflected by the children. You can make corrections and you can make it right and become good from God's perspective. God's, I feel like, trying to make us truly good, not, not fake good as we want to believe we are or get an addictive feeling of feeling good, but to truly be good, meaning being moral and having developing our character in harmony with love and truth and having integrity and honouring love and honouring truth under all circumstances with all people, not just our own children. Because again, we don't own children, even though that's a belief that you're going to need to work through if you believe it. They're God's children and we're just teachers and guardians when they're very small. And God's role is to be our actual parent and and it's up to us to actually connect with God and to understand that and come to understand God's role as a parent and to understand our role as the educator of the next generation. So both of these questions, we've looked at various principles and also at some self-reflection questions that you can ask to work through the issues. I feel there's some gender dynamics in both of the questions um, and it's a nice example of both a relationship like a gender dynamic between mother and son and mother and daughter and have the different feelings that that are going on between mum and daughter and mum and son and this is and this is for all viewers is to look if you've got different gender children or even if whatever gender your child is to look at the dynamic between you and the child and you can then and your partner as well you can reflect on all of the different feelings you have between different genders. Gender is a very, a very damaged area in our society and there's a lack of an, an equality often which is created via parents and the way that they treat children and then continue to interact with the opposite gender. And because we haven't dealt as adults with our own pain for with our mums and dads, you know, then that causes us to then bring that into our partner relationships and also with a relationship with the children and the children just reflect that back. So these questions have shown a little bit about gender dynamics and how we substitute often children rather than healing the emotional injuries from our past that we had with our parents and children, how we substitute children in order that we can either avoid feeling certain feelings or that we can get certain feelings from the child rather than healing those in ourselves so that in a self-responsible manner so that we don't um, impose that on the child or that the child doesn't have to reflect that back to us. It also was a just the question about young children reflecting the parents and what's their own desires. And as we, as I said, a young child is always reflecting its its parents. And own desires is something that develops over time. But often there's impediments from the parents for a child to fully express their own passions and desires. And that's another thing that we can look at as parents and to heal in order that children do have the opportunity to freely and openly and without apology express and be their desires or and actually investigate and explore their own desires. Also looked at where do you start with, with feeling emotion and uh, in the context of with an adult child, but this can be with an adult or a young child. So if a child is angry, for instance, at you as the parent, you need to start right there with how do you feel about that? And I mentioned if you feel hard done by or that the child has the problem or the child shouldn't be angry or whatever, you've, you need to deal with those issues because in this context it is a child that was in your care or is in your care and they are reflecting something back to you. What you need to figure out is one, 
how are you feeling about emotion? And two, what are they reflecting? Like, what is it that they are trying to expose to you that is out of harmony with love in the family dynamic? And there's many possibilities of what that could do. Anger is a guide, an indicator that there's something going on in the family. Where to start is where you're at. So start with how you feel about anger itself. How do you feel about emotion? And figure out what it is that the child's actually angry about. If you can find that, then you can start to actually unravel and look at your part in the creation of what they're upset about. And then you can make some um, loving choices and you can actually heal yourself and you can then give the gift of not being an impediment to your children when they want to work through their emotions. And that is a lovely gift I think you can give to children. But anger is a very useful emotion in order to discover one, like um, I'm finding anger in a family is a lot about indicating something's wrong, something's wrong, you know, something's wrong. There's also anger in a family when addictions don't get met. For instance, um, in our family, we've created superiority in the boys. And when I challenge that superiority and I no longer um, feel inferior and I don't meet basically the thing that I've created, which is that they are the best, that they should have all mummy's attention, that mummy should do everything for them. When I don't do that, then they get really angry. And that's because their addiction's not getting met anymore, that you know, I'm not making them feel superior anymore. I'm not doing everything for them. I'm not giving them all the attention that they feel that they are entitled to because that is what I've given them for their whole life. And so their anger is like, no, you get back in line, mum. You should do what I want you to do. Now, I'm not upset about them being angry at me. And if I am, I need to go feel about why I feel upset about it. But it is an indicator to me of, oh, good, I'm on the right track now because I'm challenging them enough that they're now getting angry and they need to go through that anger in order to then feel whatever other feelings that they have and to basically then deconstruct that they're not superior, they're not better than other people, they're equal to other people and that's what they're going to need to go through. In both these cases, anger can be like a, an indicator of like something's wrong in our family, there's a real problem here. So listen to, to your children, you know, like take note of what they're feeling and why they're feeling it, like what's really going on. Anger's often a power play. We're using anger to get something, to get power, to gain control, to, to do it. So it's not a love-based emotion, but it is an emotion that is giving us information. All emotions give us information and we can work with that. So start with where you're at and how you feel about anger itself because there's working through how you feel about emotion itself. One of the comments was, everyone's angry at me. That's not true, but it is a feeling you have and I suggest getting specific. So whenever that, whatever emotion it is, get specific about it. What exactly are you, are you afraid of? What are you angry about? Do you have anger about your child being angry? Do you want to shut them down? Do you want to stop that? Why do you feel like everyone's angry at you? What is it that ma makes you feel when everyone's angry at you? Why, what is the real feelings in you underneath that? What is the anger in the other people indicating, trying to highlight in the family if it's children, or even you know if your partner's upset and angry? Well, what, what's their anger about? What's underneath that? What's the anger covering? What's it trying to expose? What other emotions are going on and what is the dynamic that is being created and, and happening within the family? Start with where you're at. Look at yourself. How, feel how you feel. As you're feeling, you'll be able to find the causes about it. And so that's an emotional process. To make soul-based change, remember, it's an emotional process. No change can happen unless you go through an emotional soul-based you know, soul change. God's laws are trying to help you and to see what is really happening. If you seek for God's truth and what is loving from God's perspective, start with ethics. You can start basically there of like, okay, well, how would I like to be treated? You know, what's really going on here? Seek, you know, for the moral, what, what is moral from God's, God's perspective. Got certain tools like your conscience and prayer. You've got the four qualities of love, truth, faith, and humility. You can measure how you're going against those four things. And humility being the one of the it's so important to be humble to your own feelings and to be truthful about what's really happening and how you feel about it and what's really going on in your life. So, so that's the uh, starting point to explore further. I thank you for your questions. I've enjoyed thinking about it and there's so many different things in your question and 
that I could talk about. And obviously in generalities, I, I don't necessarily know the people who have sent in these questions, so I don't have a lot of background information. And I just take in principles of divine truth and any some self-reflection questions and trying to steer you in a direction that you can explore further the answer to these questions. Or if you're having similar issues happen in your family, or if you've got, they're not similar issues, but any issue you're having in your family, that you can take those principles and those self-reflection questions and begin to gain more information and understanding of what's happening in your specific situation and uniquely in your home. You can start experimenting right now. Take it one issue, or sometimes it can feel overwhelming. If you've got more than one child, it can feel really overwhelming a lot of the time. But take one issue. Try and find the biggest issue that you can identify happening in your family and work on that first. It will have the largest positive benefit if you deal with it. Tackle the big ones first and then go from there. What you're most afraid about, what you're most worried about, or what you think you're most worried about, because sometimes it ends up that once you work through that, you realize, oh no, actually, I wasn't, that wasn't as bad as now what I can see about myself or what I think I'm gonna have, what the feelings that are coming up. There's the beauty of God's way is that God never gives you more than you can cope with ever. And the beauty of working through issues is that you work through something and then you work through another thing and you keep working through issues and it's like your capacity to feel things increases. So you can feel things for longer and you can feel more intense emotions and you can feel more things that you thought that you couldn't handle, you come to have faith that, no, I can handle any emotion that's, that comes my way. It's just an emotion. It just passes through me. It's not infinite. It just, it's finite. It lasts for a period of time until I've worked through it. And if I'm humble, the more humble I can be, the more humble, then the more can be released and the, the faster I can get through that. So humility is such an important quality to develop. All of them are very important to develop, but Humility is sort of the theme of, of today's discussions, of being humble to your emotions and becoming your 100% emotional self. It's via being humble and feeling your emotion that you're going to come to know truth, going to come to understand more about love. It's an emotional process to receive love and truth from God. And you also, I find you become more logical by feeling emotion and saying that you're Personal experience and emotion might not be logical from God's perspective, but you come to understand what it was about and you can sort of, you can come and understand what it's about and see what's going on and why it's going on and why you respond in the way you do. I also am finding that being connected to my emotions and to my real feelings and remaining connected to myself makes me more logical. If I'm disconnected and I'm numbing out and I'm get trying to get away from myself I'm very illogical I'm not logical at all actually so it's by remaining connected to to myself and when I'm feeling some emotions no I might not be logical in this because you're just feeling and you just need to feel and let yourself have that process but often afterwards you can see things and, and better so thank you for the questions that were sent in and or all, all of your questions because I really appreciate them and it makes me think about different things and there's probably more that I'll think about so they may, more answers and more information may come in further discussions because I sometimes often wake up in the night with these like thoughts about, <laughs> about things and I've got to scroll them down, I have a little torch in my notebook and I scroll them down and then try and put them into videos as we go along and use them as examples or, or ways to, to highlight various areas of love and truth that are going on. Until next time, all the best and any more questions, please feel free to send them through. Thank you to those who have asked questions. I think it's a wonderful, it's wonderful to ask questions because the more that we ask, the more we can find out and it's going to stand you in good stead for when you go to the spirit world is by seeking and asking and trying to find out information. And this is what you can do with your relationship with God. You know, it's one thing to ask another human about things, but we need to start asking questions of God as well and being open and humble enough to receive the answers. So until the next video, farewell and I'll see you, see you when I see you next.